What is up, Facebook Live? It's been a while. Uh, this looks like they have a cool new upgrade to their system here. Uh, let's see if I can get this set up properly. We're going to go right there. How is everyone doing this morning? Hello, wherever you are tuning in from. Thanks for being here. Nice to see you. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Love to know who's tuning in and where you're tuning in from. Uh, today, the topic we're going to talk about, just so you know, is how much is too much? Meaning, uh, a project you're working on, a person you're, you're in communication with, uh, Tim, good morning, Something you're, any, anything you're investing time, effort, energy, or your life into, how much space do you give any one thing to exist in your life, and, and where do you draw the limits? Where do you draw the line? And what I mean by this is, is you know, think in your life right now, um, and, and wait, wait a minute, while I'm going through this, uh, Mohammed, nice, love to you as well. Timothy, nice to see you. Hilton Head, South Carolina, very nice. I have a good friend there. I've got to go visit. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Love to know where you're tuning in from. I uh, love to know three things you are grateful for. Uh, just type them down here in the section below. Uh, I'm just waiting for you in Dubai. Awesome. We are working on the details and trying to figure that one out. Um, and, and, and so as you're tuning in, love to know three things you're grateful for. Anthony, nice to see you. Love to know where you're tuning in from, just so I can see where, where our audience is around the world. Um, but as you're tuning in, today's topic, so three things you're grateful for and, and where you're tuning in from. Um, and what we're going to be focused on today very specifically it is how much space do you give any one thing, topic, project, situation, conversation uh, in your life? And, and what I mean by this is if, if you think in your life right now and think through all the different things going on, Malcolm, nice in Stockholm, great to see you. Anthony, Chicago, welcome. Uh, so if you think of all the things going on in your life, uh, you have business, you have your health. Uh, Christina, nice to see you from Texas. Anthony? Um, Illinois. So if, if you think of all the different things going on in your life, work, professional, personal, your health, um, let, let's say you're in deep conversation with someone and the conversation starts and a certain topic sparks up and you start going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. In your mind, where do you draw the limits in which you will allow that to take up space? And what, what I mean is, let's imagine, like, this is all the, you know, mental, emotional, I don't know how to make this, a big circle. Let's say this is all the mental, emotional, physical space in life you have. And you say, okay, I'm going to have this great conversation with someone, a friend, and we're going to go talking, and all of a sudden it sparks a debate, and you guys go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And in the beginning, like, it takes up maybe, like, a, a little tiny bit of space. And then after a while it starts to take up a little bit more space because you go back and forth on it and you disagree and it kind of pisses you off and then it frustrates you and then it excites you and then it, it kind of just sticks with you. And now three days later after the conversation, somewhere in your mind you're thinking, oh, why did I say that or why did they do that? And now it went from taking up this little tiny, tiny space in your life to now it's taking up like, you know, a good 20% of all the mental, emotional, physical capacity you have every day. And then it goes from like 20% and it keeps going, and it sparks up more conversation. It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, till pretty soon, as you're going through life, literally, if this is all the space you have, it's taking up like 50, 60, 70, 80%, where it's constantly in your head, it's stuck, it's, it's emotionally draining you, and it's literally just going around and around and around. And, and I don't know if you've ever had an experience like this. I've had plenty. And something I've learned over the years in having experiences like this is as things take up more and more and more and more space, because we have somewhat of a limited capacity. You know, there's somewhat of a limited capacity in, in the space we have mentally, emotionally, physically every day. I, the research that goes around this is called spotlight focus, meaning you can only focus your spotlight, your mental, emotional spotlight, you can only focus on so many things at once. And whatever it is you're focused on, um, that's what you experience, that's what you feel, that's what you think about. That's emotionally what your body is charged with. And, and, and so it changes how you feel. It changes what you're able to do. It changes the state you get to experience life in. And it changes your re-presentation, uh, your representation of life 
and, and what you experience life is around you. So it's really fascinating about that is when you wrap your head around this thought, um, I'd love to know right now, what is the number one thing that's taking up the most space in your personal mental focus right now? Meaning it's the one thing that's constantly going around in your head. It's the one thing that's constantly taking up space. And, and, and real quick, I'd love to know, is it something that's positively moving you forward and causing you to become healthier, happier, stronger, bigger, better? Or in, is whatever you're allowing to take up that space mentally, emotionally, and physically in your life and to literally consume your attention and thoughts, is it something that's slowing you down and keeping you back and causing you to, to get stuck or, or not make progress? And I'd love to know. I'm going I'm to grab this real quick and see what people are going. Uh, so Jerome is focused on growing his coaching business. Congratulations, Caleb. Hello, sir. Mr. Motivator. If you don't know who Caleb Maddox is, y'all should check him out. He is a young man. Caleb, how old are you? Um, Eric, nice to see you. I don't remember how old Caleb is, but he is on passionate fire with life right now. He's written a book. He's on fire. He's doing great stuff. Elizabeth, wish I could listen in currently in a shuttle to work. Next time, bring in headphones. Good morning, though. Oh, thank you for letting me tune into the shuttle. Uh, Muhammad, when will you be coming to Dubai? We are working out details on that. A uh, couple bumps in the road since we were talking with our partners. Stuart, definitely health, family, and business freedom. Hi from the UK. Hello. El Ellie, hi, Jarek. Hello. Lee, hope you're well. Grateful for many resources. Daylight and running. Cameron, Bridgewater, New Jersey. Grateful for clean air, clean water. Awesome. Very cool. Jarek, you rock. So do you. So my man Caleb is 14 years old. He's already written a book. He, he is passionately out there trying to coach people and inspire people. The man's on fire. You should check him out. Malcolm, definitely young kids and family, best investment ever. Wonderful. Your book launch, cool. So you got to think of these things. And as you're going through, what's your best advice for me? Caleb, be you, man. You're doing great. I, 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 as far as best advice, literally, you're on fire. Um, keep doing you. Uh, I mean, eventually, I, I would start looking for how do you get yourself to stand out. The truth is you already stand out. You're a 14-year-old who's written a book and you're crushing it. So you're already ahead of the curve, but continue looking for ways to keep progressing yourself forward. Uh, whether that's you know get, going out and getting a degree in something, whether that's uh, getting referrals, whether that's whatever that piece is, allow that to continue building so it continues to set you apart from the curve of everything that's out there. Uh, let's see. Muhammad says, I have a lot of fears. Okay, so this is, a, this is an interesting one. If you have a lot of fears going on, and I see some great stuff. So if I'm coming through here, uh, people focus on their book launch, and that's consuming all of their mental and emotional focus. Um, people, people focused on their family and kids, and that's taking up all their focus. Wonderful. You know, these are great, great, great things. Now, I also see, you know, Muhammad wrote fears. Um, my main fear is public speaking. So getting in front of people, fears. Feed your mind, stay humble, and double down on what's going well for you. Exactly. So if you think about this, whatever it is that's consuming large amounts of your mental and emotional focus, um, if anything is something that's limiting you or distracting you or frustrating you, a fear, um, possibilities of something going wrong, uh, a, you know, a, a bad negotiation, a, a something that's frustrating you, something that's getting under your skin, you need to make sure that you give them very limited amounts of time. And the moment they take up that amount of time, you cut them off. And you do not allow another ounce of energy, another thought, another, another you know, moment of your life to be invested into something that, that is not moving you forward or helping you make progress. And these happen all the time. You don't imagine, you know, you see people making YouTube videos talking about, oh, my haters, here's a video to my haters and the people that don't like me. How much more of your life are you going to invest in the people that are slowing you down? That makes zero sense to me. If someone's slowing you down, all you have to do is one thing, next. <laughs> that's it. Um, you know, I, I, I that, that's it. I, I've had this situation where people have popped up over the years. Someone shows up. And it's like, you don't even invest any energy there. You just go next and then keep moving forward and find the people that do love you, that do support you, that are into what you're doing and work with them. The people that aren't into it, it's not your job to try to convince them that you're awesome. Let them figure it out later. But next, move them on. Uh, and that, that's a way to really quickly move through them. Let's see. Uh, the fear of public speaking, again, 
You can sit there for months or years or weeks or days and, and just sit there and think about it and think about it and think about it. The fastest way to get over a fear is literally challenge it with action. So what I mean by challenge it with action is, is go book yourself the ability to do a speaking event. Maybe it's in front of 10 people, five people. Um, my first paid speaking event I ever did was with the Learning Annex. They called it How to Change Your Life in One Night. 13 people showed up, I think nine of which were my family. So thank you, family, for supporting me. Uh, but they all paid. Thank you. Um, and, and, and that was my first speaking event. I, I, I definitely was 18 years old. I thought I knew more than I did. Um, at the same time, I was bold enough and brave enough to just go for it. And, and it started a whole you know, lucrative path and career and the ability to reach a lot of people over the years. Um, so, so challenge it with action. Sarah, nice to see you. How does focus idea differ between men being single focused and women being lots of things at once? So great question. So, so women have this wonderful thing called diffused awareness. Now, it doesn't mean they focus on a lot of things. It means they focus on everything. And it doesn't mean they focus on everything every now and then. They literally focus on everything all the time. Meaning stuff that happened like six months ago is still rotating somewhere in her consciousness. And, and, and what's really fascinating about that, um, the best tip I've, I've learned to allow a, a feminine energy human being, because some men have this, some women have this, but someone who has lots of feminine energy, who's constantly thinking about everything all the time, all at once, one big factor is um, they need to emotionally dump, meaning after every so much build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, they need someone that they love and they trust and they can connect with that they can literally just let out all the emotional poison that's built up. And when they let it out, it seems to dissipate and disappear and no longer circulate in their mind. So that would be an emotional poison, something that emotionally charged you or pissed you off or frustrated you or hurt you or upset you. And maybe not even you. Maybe it was your best friend that got upset, but you picked up some of it too when she told you about it. It's like, oh, and now you need to dump it out. So that's one way to help. Two, um, setting up your environment to be quiet. Now that means different things to different people. Um, the most common thing you will hear is what, you know, how do I have to arrange the place I'm in for it to be as quiet as humanly possible? What does that mean? It's simple. Um, you know, for some people, everything has to be in the right place and just the right location for them to go ah, and feel relaxed and their mind can clear. For other people, um, it, it's not so much the right place, the right time and the right location. For some people, it's a, it's a little bit you know, a little bit disheveled everywhere because it allows their mind to just go, ha, ah, not try to make everything so perfect all the time. But it's answering the question, what has to happen for the environment around you to be quiet and calm? Um, for, now, for most people, and you got to think about this, for, for a lot of women or, or some men who have that feminine energy, going to a hotel room out of your city allows your mind to go, ha, ah, because everything's in place and it's taken care of and you don't have to think about it which allows your whole nervous system to relax for a period of time. Uh, it's why couples, not to bring this up, but it's why couples, when you go on vacation, you tend to have better lovemaking um, or great sex compared to when you're at home because literally that person's mind is not filled with all the things around her and the house and the towels and the this and the that and the dishes and you know the business and the work and the paperwork and everything else that has to be done. It's like she can relax finally and actually enjoy the process and enjoy the experience. Something to think about. So Sarah, hopefully that's helpful. Drome, 80-20, great rule. Caleb, my focus is doing more speaking. I already speaking with Gary V, Darren Hardy this year. I'm also speaking at LSU. Very cool, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, keep keep doing what you're doing. You, you're doing great, man. You're crushing it. Scott, smiley face. Ellie, for me, it's the fear of being alone the rest of my life. Interesting. So what's crazy is if you continue to focus on that and think about that and, and allow that to circulate in your head again and again and again and again, and again at some point you're going to have to say, listen, this thought has taken up too much mental, emotional space in my life. I'm tired of it. I'm done of it. It's done. It's not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm never going to allow that thought to exist in my nervous system or my mind ever again. And, and it shouldn't, you know, why should I have to sit around here and think I would if, what if, what if, what if, instead of just cutting that thought out and letting it go. Um, and, and, and you know, how, how you do that, there's lots of different techniques. Um, there, there's, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy of how to do it that way. There's NLP, there's swish patterns and oh, there's all kinds of ways. There, and there's a simple, just making a decision and saying, Hey, anytime I hear myself making that thought, I'm going to go, that's ridiculous. And just let it go. That's it. 
Um, th there's plenty of ways. So, so I would find a way that works for you and use that approach to just literally cut that thought out and give it no more space in your life. I, I don't believe the investment's worth it from my opinion, but I don't know what your opinion is. Maybe you like it. Uh, speaking is my fear. It's my focus. Man, you're 14. <laughs> you have fun with your focus a little. Uh, you'll enjoy the process. You're going to do great. I, I, I believe in you. you you're, you're doing great, man. Tiffany, once you break an arrow with the neck, you can do anything. That's true. We like doing that process. Speaking of which, if you were in Florida and you were anywhere around Melbourne, Florida, um, we have an event at the King Center coming up this Wednesday. It's a morning event, and we are doing an arrow break at it. Shh, don't tell anyone else who's coming. They don't know yet. Um, but if you're around there, you definitely want to grab a ticket. I think we have room for 300, and we have like 60 tickets left as of yesterday. And I, I know a handful are being sold quickly. Um, so if you're around Melbourne, Florida, Orlando, Jacksonville, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, anywhere there and you're listening, you might want to meet me over in Melbourne, Florida, uh, Wednesday the 3rd. I think it's early in the morning. It's just, you know, it's a couple hour presentation and training we're going to do in the morning. Uh, it's with the Home Builders Association of Melbourne. Great organization is bringing us out. Um, again, we have like, I think 60 or 40 seats left. So you, you want, if, you're, if you're around Florida, meet us there. We'll have some fun. Um, if you want information about that, send me a direct message on Facebook and I'll get you connected with the gentleman who's in charge. Jerome, how do you divide your time between learning, building, and taking action? Um, every, everyone's really different there. So, so you have to literally designate your day and decide based on the results I'm trying to achieve, how much time and effort and energy is going to need to be invested into producing that result. Now in the beginning, the truth is you don't know. So if you came to training camp and I was a running coach and you were trying to run the 400 meter race here, how do we know how fast you are? It's simple, we put you on the track, we have you run as hard as you can, I time you and we go, okay, now we know where you're at. And then from there we say, well, what's the goal? You say gold medal Olympics. I say, okay, now we know where we need to get you to. What's our plan to get you there? So same thing. If you said, listen, my goal is to meditate four hours a day, it's like, okay, well, how many hours do you do now? What can we adjust? If you said my goal is to sell 100,000 units of my service or product or whatever it is each week, we have to figure out how much time, effort, and energy has to be invested to actually get that level of result. And then we have to figure out how to repeat it. Everything else then gets rearranged to make sure we can keep you making progress in the major categories of your life while still being happy, healthy, fulfilled, and hitting that outcome consistently. I uh, hope that makes sense. So that's how we do it on this side, at least. Caleb, great stuff. Great advice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeannie, Kale, Truth, Muhammad, I've got gifted healing energy, and I want to do energy demons. Fear stop me. That's wonderful. So, so with that, you need to use that faith you have inside of you and allow that to guide you, protect you, and allow you to speak what's real for you um, the, the one thing I would recommend based on, on where you are at in the world, do it in a place and way in the beginning where you have people who will accept it and be with you in this journey. Um, there, there's, for whatever it's worth, there's certain parts of the world that if you believe what is right goes directly against someone else who's in charge, government or power wise, you want to make sure you start in a place where people believe with you and then allow it to build out. Otherwise, if it conflicts with, with you know, people who are in power, they will stop you and shut you down pretty quickly. Um, Sarah, that's a great way of thinking about it. Quiet in different ways. I like it. So much sense to me. Thank you. So welcome. Michelle, nice to see you. Timothy, we're working on traveling two months a year and moving forward. That's awesome. We're working on being passionate for each other. We're on fire. That's awesome to hear, sir. How would you go about having you come and speak here at an event in St. Petersburg, Florida? Caleb, you're in St. Pete? I didn't know you were so close. Buddy, I, well, I'm, I think you have school. <laughs> Speaking of which, it's 12 p.m. Are you on lunch break or something? Because you should be at school, my friend. Uh, love to know at 14 what you were doing. Uh, if you're not in school for some reason, you should come and check out our event in Melbourne, Florida on Wednesday. Um, Yali, thank you, Jarek. I'm loving. Hi, everyone. Grateful Yali from Israel. Creative ability. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Lee, mine would be worrying about that I'm doing the best work of business for the rest of my life. Life is full of choices. I'm 40. Now time flies. But otherwise, I'm 
Okay, so Lee, same exact thought process here. How much more time are you going to allow yourself to invest in the worrying about that versus just believing in what it is you're doing and really taking action, which you are doing, so give yourself some credit. Love it. On my way to India, where I first went with Platts, catch you later. Aw, have a fun trip. Lee, P.S. looking forward to part two of the seminar Thursday. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it too. Oh, if you're not familiar, um, we did part one of a two-part training event for our Performance Coach University program. If you go to performancecoachuniversity.com, um, there's a little bar on the very top of the screen and also a pop-up that says, hey, check out this two-part webinar. Um, and, and then it's a webinar sharing some details of, of, of the exact stuff we share in Performance Coach University and how to identify a lot of the main factors. On the first one, we shared the 14 major factors that we use in one-on-one -on -one coaching that we know influences people to action. The whole question of why do people do what they do, we dove into you know one in depth and highlighted the other 14 just to give people an understanding of all the factors that cause someone to or not to take action. Um, there's a lot of people out there who say like, this is the one factor. The truth is there's lots of factors. And the more you're aware of, the more you understand, the better you can switch from position to position to position and tool to tool to tool to better understand how to get the leverage points to work. One of my favorite phrases when it comes to inspiration or finding leverage or motivating or getting someone to take action, one of my favorite things that I've ever heard is every tool works some of the time, but no tool works all the time. And, and, and so the key is the more that you're aware of and the more you're well-practiced and versed in, the better you can approach someone and keep shifting gears until you figure out the one that causes them to take action, follow through, and get the results they're after. Um, Ellie, thank you. I think you saying out loud is already helpful. Awesome. Malcolm, thanks for the uplift. Now, family time. Wonderful. Basman, love your topics. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Alex, definitely agree with dealing with your fears and have to just take the step. My goal is to step into real estate market. Congratulations. What, which market? Where are you in the world? If you're on these videos are great. Um, if you think these videos are great and you're learning something or you think this is valuable information, please hit the share button, add a little message with it. Just, you know, tell two points you think is great and, and click share and, and help us spread the word and get to more people. I, I, I have fun sharing. If you think it's valuable, help me spread it to more people. I really appreciate it. Uh, Kristen, good afternoon. Nice to see you. Great. Thank you. My leader. I'm not your leader. <laughs> Definitely, we can be friends. Uh, I, I'd love to, you know, coach and, and, and inspire. I'm homeschooled. Awesome. Well, you ask your principal if it's okay. Uh, to do an event in St. Pete, we, we'll have to talk it through and see if there's organizations that can sponsor it for us or, or get that covered. Um, you, you should also, if you're, I mean, if you're really into what you're doing, you should go work out at um, the strength camp with Elliot. He's over in... Clearwater or St. Pete, I think. Uh, really, really powerhouse guy. If you're not, I'm sure you're familiar with him. If you're not familiar with him, definitely get involved. Um, great, great stuff. If he was closer, we'd, we'd probably be there every day ourselves. Uh, Maria, thank you for the videos. It was great meeting you at Teresa's Socialite event. I will check out your webinar about coaching. Thanks, many blessings. Maria, it was wonderful meeting you as well. I apologize we didn't get more time hanging out. Um, but uh, we did have a limited amount of time up there in Toronto. Uh, I think Teresa said you were interested in our coaching program. I'll make sure to get you all the information. Um, if you would, send me a direct message or, or I can post the links on here. Tim, can you please post a link to that coaching video, 14 Steps? Absolutely. Uh, it, it's a recorded webinar we did. Um, just, just so you know that the, the intent was to tell people about our performance coach university program and show them. So it does the 14 pieces and then it does highlight our performance coach university because we want people to know about it. Uh, we're currently enrolling right now for March, 2016. So it's coming up. Um, there's a special that ends today that, that there's a really awesome special. So we'll make sure to post that too. Uh, Jerome really appreciate the value here. Thanks, Jerry. You're so welcome. So it looks like all the questions are answered. Here, here's the piece I'm going to throw out there for everyone watching. Jenny, I signed up for half marathon in April. Awesome. Not going as expected. I'm now fearful of getting swept off the course because I might follow the required time per mile. How do I get past this fear? It drives me nuts because I did a firewalk in July and now I'm afraid of something like this. It's my fear of failing. Okay. Um, Jenny, you might want to reach out to my wife. She is currently... Um, She's currently training for the Princess Half Marathon uh, at Orlando Disney. And, and, and in that, she, she's been you know, one big factor. I've trained for many marathons myself. 
Um, if you haven't picked up the book Slow Burn by Stu Middleman, definitely grab a copy. Stu was my tr marathon coach, so I hired him to, to teach me how to prepare my mind and body for running marathons. I did one by myself in the beginning with no training. It hurt. I did the second one with him, and literally it felt like a breeze. Like I could literally run around, talk to people, say what's up. Like It was a lot of fun when you had the right training, I learned. So having the right coach made a big difference in that marathon training. The, the truth is that this is your very first one. Having you know fearful or little butterflies, totally natural. I'll give you a heads up. There's going to be people power walking. There's going to be people jogging. There's going to be people running, like running, running. They're really fast and crazy. Um, so you will have a whole ton of fun. The, the best way to get over that fear, honestly, would be to go join a community of runners and have fun getting used to the whole experience of running. So I, I would wrap up in a local running group and start doing the meetups. They have them on meetup.com. They have local running clubs all over the world. I've, I've yet to go to a city that doesn't have a local running club. Uh, you can join it. Usually it, it's 50 bucks or I, I joined team in training, which was wonderful. And we raised money for leukemia and, and lymphoma. And in return for raising the money, they put me in a big community and we all ran together constantly. It was, it was wonderful. But if you join that community and get used But if you join that community and get used to the process of doing the runs, what will happen is you'll get so involved in the community, you'll really kick butt. One of my cousins, we did a blog on JRC TV. So if you go to JRCTV.com, comb through the health and fitness ones, you'll see one with uh, my cousin. I forget what we titled it. But she talks about her. You know, She was struggling in the beginning. She found a running community, and it radically changed her whole experience with it. And, and, and she's gone on to do all kinds of races. It's really fun. So find that community. It will really help get over that fear. Uh, please post the coaching video. I definitely will. Scott, thanks, Jared. Grateful. I finally checked out one of your live videos. Really solid stuff. Scott, thank you for joining us. Um, if, if someone out there is struggling with their career or finding the right career, check out Scott, um, E-N-G-L-E-R Engler. And, and he has an awesome book he's written. Actually, I think this is the second one. And, um, Awesome book on, on, on how to really master the interview process and, and get that job you're going after. He just released it. He's in the middle of the book launch, so definitely check it out. If you know someone who's struggling to find the job or find a career or get hired, definitely check out that book. Um, and if you look in the comments below, it's Scott Engler. Hopefully I said your last name right. Scott, sorry about that. Uh, Jeannie, thank you. I will reach out and put your wife and check on the site. Actually doing a Star Wars one at Disney. That's awesome. Uh, Yali, Caleb Miggs, PMDU. Dude. Careful with this guy, Yali. He is on fire. My man's 14 and passionate. Him and I Snapchat back and forth all the time. He's a cool dude to take care of him. Anyways, um, big question to circle all the way back around how we got started today. Focusing on what are you allowing to take up space in your life? A relationship, a friendship, a project, a business deal, um, anything that was once an opportunity, but now that it's taken up so much space, it's actually become a distraction. And, and where are you going to set the limits and when are you just going to slice it off if it's no longer something you are interested in? That's the big thought and question for today. If you found this useful, please click share. Uh, 28 minutes. I am going to jump and get cracking today in everything else we are up to. Hope you have an amazing day. If you haven't joined us, go to performancecoachuniversity.com and join our webinar. Part number two is this Wednesday the 4th. I think it's at 730 at night Eastern time. I have to check. Uh, anyways, hope you have an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow. If you have any thoughts or questions or topics you would like to see these live videos on, please put it in the comment section because we are currently drafting out daily topics we want to be um, going on each day. And, and our, our goal, we love your accountability, is to start nailing one of these out every single day and then keep that moving. And, and we'd love your help to reach more people. So if you found value, please click share and help us spread the word. See y'all later.